I have been trying for weeks, if not months, to get our next guest on the program. I have been working so hard for this, and I am so excited that we finally tracked him down. We are now being joined via the magic of Skype by the legend himself, the axe murderer, Vanderlei Silva. How about this? What an honor this is. Vanderlei, how are you? Very good, very good. Hello, how are you guys? Good? I am doing great. Thank you so much for joining us. Where are you right now? I'm at my house in Brazil. Wow. Where in Brazil? In Curitiba. Curitiba, Curitiba in South. Yes. Curitiba. We were just talking Side to... Park City, this, the, the Shogun City, Rafael Cordero. I'm back to the Mecca. That is amazing. Well, again, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, so uh, a very busy time for you. You're actually uh, fighting for Ryzen in, what, uh, 13 days, April 17th, in a, in a very unique fight. We have so much to talk to you about, but let's start with this one. It's, it's, a, it's a tag team grappling match. Uh, again, exactly. Yeah, explain. You, you have not revealed your, your, your teammate yet, right? Who is your teammate going to be? Going to be Tamura. I am Tamura against, against uh, Sakuraba and Tokoro. And, and where did they come up with this idea? This is a very unique thing. Explain how this all came about. Yeah, because uh, this, uh, I'm going to fight on Sakuraba's. When Sakuraba is better, supposed to be, is better than me yeah. on Jiu-Jitsu. And, and we're going to fight MMA on June or July in, 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 in Bellator. And I'm going to maybe in September and raising. Wow. So you are all of a sudden a busy man. Yeah, yeah. I finally, I'm back to the to the business fight. This is my job. This is what I what I like to do. What I know to do, and I'm so happy to to back to the great events in the world. So um, you recently announced your retirement, and then you came out of retirement. Why did you initially say that you were done fighting? Why did you retire? I retired because I'm I'm not agree for I'm not agree with the the, the MMA situation. No, because. I'm not I'm not happy anymore and just take care of my take care of my take take off my I don't want to fight anymore mm. but after after I I finish my 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 contract with the other event uh, the other the, the UFC and, and and Rise and Bellator offer a, a good situation for me and I decide back to the ring. Are we gonna look at how I feel? So I feel good. So I can do. Then so I can make a great show for my fans, because the the biggest challenge in our world is we we are one sport or we are one entertainment. Hmm. Because so we are a sport. We need to change a lot of things because we don't have one official ranking. When you know when you are, we feel who you're gonna fight, who is our next. Sometimes the number ten. Fight with the champs. Mm -hmm. This is a show. This is not sport. Mm. No, and I think the actors make more money. I think it's gonna be better for us. I wanted to be an entertainment man right now. When did things go wrong for you and, and, and the UFC? Because it seemed like for a while you guys were cool, and then you you just you wanted to leave. When did that happen, and why? Well, I think I think it's, uh, some things like uh, go wrong. And I'm, I'm coming from the old school when I talk in direct to the manager. And I feel a little bit sad when he start talking some things about me. He he, and he no, no talking face to face to me in the bad moments. But that's the, the new moment in this part. You know, mm. This is the professional thing. Maybe not his fault. Maybe, no. But I don't like that. And when, when you not feel happy more with your, your boss, you need to change. Hmm. No, uh, I, I, like, I like, I like, I like him. He's a great guy. He changed the sport. I respect him a lot, and I need to say sorry. Since I said, I said, I talk too much about him. Hmm. No, he's the boss. No, he, he paid the bills. He have the responsibility. But we finish our, we finish our history, and now we're gonna start the new history. And of course, you had the issue in Nevada. I've said on this show and many other shows that I. I, I, I've long believed that you didn't deserve any punishment because you were never um, a licensed fighter. They didn't have the jurisdiction to ban you for life. Now they've made it a three-year suspension. Um, do you still want to fight this? Do you still want to, 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 to try to get this suspension lifted altogether? No, no, no because that commission will have any, 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 any rules in, in me. Because no, no, I, I don't saw the rules when the guys tell, hey, happened this. That's the punishment. It happened this. No, these guys doing what these guys want to do. 
and this is the past. I don't want. I, I don't care about these guys, and I don't respect what this guy's doing. I don't like it. So you want to fight before that three year period is up, right? You're hoping to fight, you know. Uh, yeah, I, I'm gonna fight soon. I can, and, and, and because these guys don't have any rules against me, I don't sign nothing. I'm nothing. I'm not working for these guys. Sure. Long time. Yeah. Okay. Um. And, and and what about this? The whole thing. Did that contribute to your, um, your displeasure with the sport? Like with them giving you the lifetime ban? Is that why you said, you know what, I'm done with this. I don't want to deal with this anymore. Is that why you retired also? Yeah, imagine it's in the, so somebody talking you can't do in, you can't do in your job anymore. Yeah. This this is who make that rules? Who who tell who can work and who can't work? Hmm. I, I I I have my son to feed, I have my wife to feed, to give the food, to make the food in my in my in my in, my, in, in the mouth, no? And, and, that, that, and that's bad for for everybody. That commission no have any, 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 any credibility to talking about nobody. After the guys catch one fighter in, in, in the test, and in two months after the guys gonna, hey, ah, we catch this guy in the test. Hmm. Maybe this, 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 this guy, this guy be one, one, one guy can not so famous. Is our own rules, and for the famous guys, it's other rules. Hmm. I don't accept that. We need to make it one rules to everyone. It's them. Are you are you worried that other commissions in the United States might listen to them and not want to allow you to fight in their state, or are you confident that you'll be able to fight in the U.S. as well? I respect the rules. No, yeah. when, when I have the, the when I have the commission with the credibility, are we gonna resp- are we gonna are we gonna respect? Okay. Um, so, is there a state or two in particular that you want to fight in when you fight in the U.S., perhaps for Bellator? The two, uh, I wanted to make the interesting fights. Yeah. I think in, in Bellator, uh, one guy I will love to fight is against Kimbo. Ah. Kimbo going to be, and I don't think going to the ground. I want to, <laughs> I want to fight in his area. No, I want, wow. Because the two, I wanted to make a good show. I wanted to make it, I want to make it, the, 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 give the emotion to my fans. And when I can't do that, I'm going to do. When I can't do, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really stop it. Uh, but ha- right now, I'm too good. Have you told this idea to Scott Coker? And what does he think of it, if so? No, not yet. Okay. He's he going to know in your, in your, <laughs> in your show. Um, uh, what was it like when you met up with Scott? Why did you feel like, okay, this is someone I want to work for? What was that, that meeting like with him? No, he, he, him. I like what what him and, and, and Mike doing. This yep. guy's talking Hogan. the the, the fight board. Yeah, and, and fights words and offer for me a really good money, more than what we received before in in, in the other event. And I like the numbers, and and it's good for me. It's good for him. It's good for the fans. I'm gonna back. What about meeting up with uh, Sakaki Bara again in Japan? Uh, a man who helped make you famous in Pride, and now you're back with him. What was that like to reunite with him? Did you ever think that would happen? This be great because him is a, is a great promoter. He respected the fighters. You know, talk any bad things about the fighters, and I feel really, ha- really happy to back to fight for him again. Uh, why is this fight or this match on April seventeenth not an actual fight? Like, why are you doing the grappling first and then fighting? Why not just do the MMA stuff right off the bat? No, because the truth, I, I'm out for. I'm stopping to train and fight for close to three years, uh-huh. and this thing happened fast. Yeah, no, I don't have so much time to prepare myself, and I like to do my best. I like to make a good shows, and this is like one warm up to I'm back to the to the ring. The truth, I wanted to fight on the on the old pride rules. I want to kick the guys in the face <laughs> to the ground. So with that rules, I thinking I can I can fight. We see anyone. Wow. Um, okay, so that's what you're going to be doing when you fight. You're going to do MMA for them later on, right? Yeah, yeah. First one, are we going to do that? We're going to do that grappling, and after, are we going to back to the the X Games from the from the <laughs> fights because that that old school rules is the best for me. I love it. So you said you want Kimbo and Bellator. What about in Ryzen? Who comes to mind as as an opponent? Anyone that you have now? Yeah, there, there. Are we gonna make one? Are we gonna make one? The tournament, the first, the first, the first, the, the first, the first event gonna be September, and the finish, the event gonna be December. Wow. With two fights, 
in, 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 the, in the night. I want to back to the to fight with the, 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 the tough things in the world. You're going to be a part of this tournament. Yeah, we're going to be part of this wow. tournament. And, and and the rules for the the tag team grappling match. What exactly like is it like pro wrestling where you tag in the guy? How does this work? No, the, 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 going to be like a jiu jitsu the, the yeah. grappling fight. I, I I don't know if it's going to be one by one or two by two. I'm going to fight against two, no problem. <laughs> <laughs> grappling the neck into one, the leg to the other. It's going to be really interesting. I think the fans going to like it. And this is like a the new moment of the uh, of yeah. the Vanderlei Silva, and I hope I make my fans happy. How much did you miss fighting? Do you, do, you, do you really miss being out there in front of the people? Is this something that's bothering you that that you really need again? No, I I I missing a lot my fans because when you wake up in the morning, you know, having not no nothing to do. I do other things, but I like to train. I like to prepare myself. I like to have an opponent. I like to have my 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 life my life fight mm. and I know I know I, I can't I can I can't I can't do that for a couple of years more I hope so I feel good I I doing good in the train I train with Andre Gida and Evolução Thai here in Brazil and I, 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 I the young guys had a tough moment <laughs> with me really wow <laughs> the Vanderlei Silva is back he's still got it what about Kings MMA are you training there as well for these fights. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm we, gonna train at King's MMA too. With, I, I trained with Verdun last week here in Curitiba. He came to promote his event here. And man, not too fun. <laughs> <laughs> Verdun, Verdun is in his best moment. I see, I see him. Wow. I saw him. He's great, man. I think he's gonna be champ for a long time. I don't see anyone to take off his belt in that moment. So, so now, do you live full time in Curitiba? No more Las Vegas for you or California? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I moved to here because Brazil. We, we live in, in, in the tough moment right now. Yeah. Because that that, that shirt is a, is a one judge here. So my Moro Moro is a one judge here in Brazil. Can put any the, the cor- can, and put the corruption guys in the jail. Oh. And we we, we try to change the president. Because the, the situation here is terrible, 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 really? terrible. Too much corruption. The guys don't take don't take care about the the population. You no, know, a lot of guys lost the job. You no, know, and, and we we we, we live in, in the one of the most bad moments in the history of Brazil. Wow. And I back to help our, 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 the population to try to change that moment and go into the new moment because we are in bad, bad, bad moments. Did you always believe that you would fight again? Did you always believe that you would be free, or were you worried that your career would have been, you know, cut short and you wouldn't fight again? The true, I think, when you when you are when you, como fala a verdade, true. Yeah. When 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 you tell the truth and you you are in the side of the truth, the truth gonna happen. No? Mm, mm. And I know I'm right. I know I know making the default too. To the bed for what these guys tell, and I know I, I, I with the truth, and this making me confident. I know you have a fantastic lawyer in um, in in Las Vegas, uh, Ross Goodman. Are, are you hoping that change will happen as far as the commissions are concerned? That they'll be able to free, you know, um, uh, n- not not have the kind of impact on the fighters like what's happened with you, lifetime ban and three year ban. Are you are you hoping to spearhead that movement where you can change things a little bit with the commissions? I think I think in the true um, some some rules. These guys need to we need to fix the commission's rules. Mm. We need to have the same rules to anyone. And the guy say, hey, you do that, this is gonna happen. Don't say, ah, happen this. Ah, for you is one year. For you is two year. For you is two year. Three years. For you is a lifetime. No, this is not. This is 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 is, is totally wrong. We need to have. The, the, the rules to everyone, the same rules. That's what we want. Do you, foresee, for do you foresee that happening? Do you foresee it changing? I think uh, you can repeat. Do, 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 you, do you think that it will change the sport though, as far as the commissions and the way they, they put out the rules? Do you, are you confident that this will happen? 
Exactly. I, this is what we need. We, we need to saw the rules. We need to know the rules. And we need to, to look in. Can that rules is the same rules to everyone. Okay. Because it's impossible you catch one guy two months before the fight and say, hey, you can fight. Uh -huh. Ah, we catch him. Now he's on time. No, this is not... not not good for anyone. Uh, what do you think it's going to be back? Uh, be like back in uh, Japan when you're with your fans there? It's been a while since you've been there. You've had great moments, even you know against Brian Stan. What do you, how do you think it's going to be like for you? It's going to be great. I, I feel so happy to back to Japan to fight in Japan again. And the true when I fight there, I feel difference. I feel the energy. I feel inspiration from the fans. And I'm. I, I hope. Uh, I feel I'm going to back to the, one of the great moments in my in my life. Has there been any talk of you versus Fedor? Yeah, yeah I hope I can, I can fight against Fedor soon. Soon. We're going to fight a couple of couple guys before, of course. But uh, I will love, I respect him, I like him. But the true, I would like to test myself against him. Wow. I don't know why. When I am the best moment in my life, and he's in his best moment. I don't know why these guys don't make this fight happen. Yeah. These guys never offered this fight for me. Never. And the other day, I think, why these guys don't make this fight when I am champion and he's champion? No, but we can do now. No problem. I, 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 think, I think it's going to be really interesting to, to the fans. Okay, two last quick things. And again, obrigado. Thank you so much for the time. Opa, boa. Uh, when do you think you'll make your debut for Bellator? Do you know yet? Do you know the month, the date? I think maybe it's in, in June or July. I wow. think so. Oh, wow. So this is happening. Soon, soon. It's going to happen. And it's going to be great because I think in Bellator, I be in Bellator and when, when Sean Rock fights against Kimball, uh, against, against uh, Sean Rock. Yeah. And I like, I like the event. I like the production. These guys make a really good job. And the guys treat, right, right now, the guys treat me very well. With the respect, with a good money, and I hope this going to, I, I help these organizations to grow because you you, you the FC the, the the moment is the biggest, but we need the, the competition. The competition is good. We need to have the others, the other the other options to the fighters. Mm. No, because you are not happy in one event, you can fight in the other because because because. The competition is good, yeah. Uh, because the, the goal is we we, we make it a better situation to the fighters. No, I hope the guys uh, the guys have more opportunity to fight and and, and feed his feed his families. Right. And to be clear, you don't have your opponent yet, though, for the debut, right? You don't know who you're fighting yet. No, not not, not, not yet. Okay. But uh, I'm I'm open to fight to anyone for okay. me. Uh, the axe murderer. <laughs> I think it is interesting to the fans. It's interesting for me. All right. We'll leave it at that. Uh, April 17th, you make your long-awaited return to MMA. Um, congratulations on coming back and all these exciting things happening for you. And Vanderlei, again, thank you so much for coming. I really appreciate it. And thank you to your <laughs> lovely wife, T, for hooking this up. I appreciate her as well. Uh, good luck sure. to you, and we'll talk to you soon, Vanderlei. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye. There he is. Obrigado to the axe murderer, Vanderlei Silva. Um, wow, exciting stuff there to talk to him after all this time. It has been a while. And to, to, um, to recap, Kiyoshi Tamura will be the tag team partner for one Vanderlei Silva. This is April 17th, Ryzen 2. Kazushi Sakuraba and Hideo Tokoro will be on the other side of the coin. Uh, a fascinating <laughs> a, a, a tag team grappling match. Only in Japan. The first time since December of 2008 that the 46-year-old Tamura will actually be in action. So coming out of retirement himself, the legend in Japan, Kiyoshi Tamura and Vanderlei Silva teaming up against Kazushi Sakuraba and Hideo Tokoro. Of course, also on that card, uh, Darren Cruikshank will be competing. Recently released by the UFC, uh, now a member of Ryzen. I think a lot of people did not see that one coming as well.
so interesting times over there. And as he mentioned, he will be uh, competing, hopefully, for Bellator in the not-too-distant future. Uh, interesting things about, I've said it uh, time and again, that, uh, look, this is, this is, you know, to me, it, it, it's pretty clear. And I've had a chance to talk to Ross Goodman, his, his lawyer, in Las Vegas on, on a few occasions. It's pretty clear, in my opinion, that he should not have received that lifetime ban. And then he gets a three-year suspension, which is interesting because Chael Sonnen, remember, he was supposed to fight Chael Sonnen. They have the press conference. Um, they do the random drug tests. Chael failed his. Vanderlei did not take the test. And then it comes out that Vanderlei wasn't a licensed fighter. And it clearly states in the Nevada Athletic Commission statute that they have jurisdiction over licensed fighters. And this issue came up when they asked Vitor Belfort for a random drug test. Remember that at the MMA Awards? They asked Vitor Belfort for a random drug test, and then they realized that he was not a licensed fighter. Every year, in case you don't know, every year a fighter has to apply for a license in Nevada. It doesn't just last forever. It doesn't last five years like a, a, a driver's license. It doesn't last, you know, uh, five years like a passport. It's it's every year. And if you don't fight there for a couple of years, you, you don't have um, you don't have the need to do it. You don't have the need to sign up for it. You don't have the need to apply for a license. So it it, it just so happened that Vandalay had not applied for a license in the state of Nevada and, and had not been active there. So when they asked him for this random drug test, I'm not sure if they knew this or not, but he was actually not a licensed fighter. Now, he did admit to taking or to to having ingested some diuretics, which are actually, um, they are banned in their own right, but that would not lead to a lifetime ban or even a three-year suspension. Initially, they gave him the lifetime ban for running away. His team maintained that he was not a licensed fighter, so he did not have to take the test. A very smart move on his legal team's part. And then after they gave him the lifetime ban, they fought it. Um, a, a superior court said that, you know, that it was uh, arbitrary and capricious, the, the suspension, the lifetime suspension given, the lifetime ban, to be more exact, given to Vanderlei Silva. So they did the hearing again after several several delays, and they came up with three years, which I still think is too much when you consider the fact that Chael Sonnen, with all due respect, failed two tests, and he's free to fight this summer. I believe July 23rd is when his suspension is up. So why is Vanderlei getting the three-year suspension? Very strange, right? Well, um, he had his issues with the UFC. Uh, he said he wanted to retire. He made some, some claims um, about them that he later on retracted which were, was obviously the right thing to do. Um, and they parted ways somewhat amicably, I guess you can say. Uh, and, and recently he signed with Bellator, and now it appears as though he is going to try to, uh, as we somewhat predicted earlier, going to try to fight before that three-year suspension is up, saying, look, they had no jurisdiction over me. I didn't sign anything. I was not a licensed fighter. How can they stop me from making a living? So first things first for Vanderlei Silva. It's April 17th in Japan, returning to the scene of his many great moments, um, teaming up with Nobuyuki Sakakibara, the former head of Pride, and uh, this is uh, this is sort of a uh, a homecoming, if you will, for Vandalay. And then later on in the future, he will be competing, hopefully, for his sake, for Pride. Um, excuse me, Pride, Bellator, I should say. Old habits die hard. Bellator, of course, now teaming up with Scott Coker and his crew, and, and thanks to them for helping me track down Vandalay. I, I really appreciate it. A hard man to track down. And like I said, thank you very much to his wife, his wonderful wife, T, for that as well. Uh, in a minute, we are going to be joined by John Jones. He was on the program uh, last week, as you can remember. Um, it was a fascinating interview because he came on the show to tell the world that he had been pulled over by the police, which is uh, a very rare thing. And again, I give him credit for it. I, I know some people want to dismiss that, but it takes a lot. Uh, whether it was it was you know put together by a PR team, it was a strategy or not, it takes a lot to tell the world this. And that, of course, led to the snowball effect where the video came out and, 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 then, he, and then he was arrested on Tuesday and he was uh, put in jail for two days, could not see a judge for, um, for two days. He was unable to get on the docket on Wednesday 
Oh, okay. <laughs> Guillermo were telling me that uh, that his wife's name, that, that Vandalay's wife's name is Taya. Excuse me. Uh, I didn't mean to mispronounce that. Anyway, uh, it all worked out for John as of Thursday, free and clear, and we all thought, okay, great. Um, we are going to see this fight. This is the fight that the world has been wanting to see. I've been saying for some time that this rematch is fun. It's so great. There's so many great storylines. It's amazing. We're going to get to see Cormier versus Jones with Cormier as champion and all that stuff. Well, a, a funny thing happened. And as I said at the top of the show, um, what, what a crazy week in the sport it was. A funny thing happens on Friday. Uh, news leaks via BJPen.com of all websites. And um, on April 4th, Fool's Day, no less, which made it very strange. And I, I reiterate to people once again, I would never, ever in a million years, ever in a million years, ever, again, I'll say it, um, I, I would never, ever do an April Fool's joke. Uh, as far as news is concerned, no way. Um, I, I cannot lose that trust. If I did that, you can you can unfollow me. You can uh, give me the F you. You can say that you're never going to listen to or, to or believe anything that I say. No, I, I, a news person should never do an April Fool's joke. It's just ridiculous. And I couldn't believe how many people were actually asking me if I was pulling an April Fool's joke. First of all, why would anyone do an April Fool's joke at, you know, what was it, 11 p.m. at night? Come on now. No one's doing that. The day is gone. The day has passed. And there were some pretty bad ones. Yes, Alexander Gustafson has not retired. Uh, yes, Neil Magny, who did sign a new contract with the UFC, is not getting a title shot next. There were some ones, and, and you always kind of have to predict the thing. Although I will say, the, the Gustafson one, that was written nicely. They put it together. It's clear that they they thought of this. Um, when it wasn't just some something that they put together, you know, randomly. But April Fool's, when it's coming from a fighter and not a news site, typically don't believe it. There are some quote-unquote news sites that will do it. Uh, not this one. Not me. I'm not going to do it. So please don't ask that question again. It's never going to happen. Anyway, it comes out on Friday. Cormier's out. And then uh, for the next, I don't know, 18 hours or so, there's this constant stream of information coming out about who is going to fight John Jones. First, it's, will he fight? He puts out a video. Yes, I will fight. Uh, it will either be at light heavyweight or heavyweight. He was saying, you know, I'm down for whatever. Uh, then I was told that Anthony Johnson was the the top choice. That's who they went to first. And of course, that's the most obvious candidate. Unfortunately for Anthony Johnson, he just recently had a procedure done uh, on his mouth and he's not allowed to bite down on his um, his his mouth guard for several weeks. So that ruled him out, unfortunately. What timing? Of course, how could he have predicted this? Got to do what you got to do. And to a degree, he probably wanted that full training camp. This is a very important fight. If he loses to John Jones, then he is uh, now down one to Jones and to Daniel Cormier, um, which is not a great spot to be in. So Anthony Johnson ruled out. And it really came down to, from everything that I heard, and, and by the way, I was, I was updating this as I was at the park and then the, the Natural Museum of history, I think it is, on the Upper West Side in New York. Like this, this was my Saturday, um, as I was trying to, you know, get ahead of this story and 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 update all of you. This is what I was doing. I kind of felt horrible that I was completely ignoring my family, um, but once again, the the glamorous life of an MMA um, journalist. Um, so so it went from Anthony, then then OSP was discussed, Rashad Evans seriously discussed, and in the end, they went with o OSP. And I know Mark Hunt threw something out there. It was a little too late. Uh, they had already settled on OSP, and I know that um, heavyweight was thrown out initially by John, but that, from what I understand, was never really considered. They wanted the the light heavyweight fight. They wanted the interim title fight. They wanted him to main event, UFC 197. And how about Demetrius Johnson, by the way, who once again is in the co-main event of a, of a big card and then has to deal with something like this. Now, luckily for him... He and that's why I thought this scenario was so great. He got to play second fiddle to Jones and Cormier, and and the questions about him headlining and his drawing power and the flyweights, all that stuff, all went out the window. And then for a second there, we thought that he was going to have to main event again. Well, it, it works out in his favor. John remains on the card, and we get to see the great story of you know, as I called him last week, and we'll continue to call him the greatest of all time, returning in a somewhat you know, 
I don't want to call it a tune-up fight, but this sort of special attraction fight, if you will. And he's fighting for the interim belt. And how weird is this scenario? Uh, John Jones, who was the champion as of you know April or early May, I should say, um, gets his belt taken away from him. And and now he returns. He was gonna fight the guy who ended up winning the belt, the you know the vacant title. And now he's fighting for the interim title. The interim champion, in a weird way, is still the lineal champion. If I got all of this correctly, it's it's a very strange scenario. And 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 one, uh, once again with the interim titles, Frankie Edgar, Jose Aldo, uh, these interim belts. I I get it in this case. Like John Jones should probably be fighting for the belt. Um, I mean that that obviously makes sense he was the champion beforehand it's just who who could have ever predicted that he'd be fighting for the interim title against osp what a strange and wacky sport that this is it's it's you can't you can't predict these things bizarre so like i said in a minute we are going to be uh joined hopefully by john jones and then after that we'll be joined by mike wilkinson and uh, he has some news to share with us as well and then we will get to your questions and comments as i said at the top of the show a bit of a, a postscript an faq if you will on uh, everything that we talked about last week regarding um uh, fox and uh, there's a lot obviously to discuss regarding ufc 200 and there's also a, a, a show this Sunday that has somewhat flown under the radar. Not the deepest card of all time, but certainly a very interesting and important main event between Junior Dos Santos and Ben Rothwell. Uh, hard to deny Ben Rothwell a shot at the belt if he wins this fight. Uh, he's coming off a win over Josh Barnett. He submitted Josh Barnett the first time that that has ever happened to Josh Barnett. That was back in January. And now here he is fighting the former champion, Junior Dos Santos. That is a Sunday afternoon card, a very unique one in Zagreb, Croatia. And that airs live on FS1 this Sunday. Uh, the co-main, if you will, if you want to call it that, the uh, heavyweight fight between Derek Lewis and Gabriel Gonzaga serving as the co-main. I, I would expect, I still feel like that Derek Lewis, Roy Nelson fight is going to happen, especially if he wins. I think Derek Lewis, if he wins this fight against Gabriel Gonzaga, could probably get uh, Roy Nelson first. Remember, there was that video that emerged following, um, you know, actually in the midst of, what was it, 196, where Roy Nelson and Derek Lewis actually shook hands, and Dana White was there. It seemed like they had come to some sort of agreement as to, uh, you know, when and, and where and why. And, like, it just seemed like everyone was uh, was on board with this idea, and then uh, an injury happened. Derek Lewis takes a fight on short notice. I don't know if any of you follow Derek Lewis, by the way, on Twitter, but he, <laughs> very different than his uh, public persona, than than the way, uh, sort of like Stipe Miocic, but in a different way. He he tweeted out some pictures of him um, uh, dropping off some kids at the pool, if you get what I'm saying, without being too graphic, saying that this is the way he cuts weight. I did not expect that from Derek Lewis, a very uh, entertaining follow in the world of mixed martial arts. Um, so anyway, he's back in action, and then the schedule ramps up once again. Um, April 16th in Tampa Bay, the Fox show headlined by Khabib Nurmagomedov and Tony Ferguson. And then, of course, UFC 197, now headlined by John Jones versus uh, Ovin St. Preux. Uh, while I have this quick break, I do want to uh, give a shout out to our good pal Paige Van Zandt, who joined us in studio the day before the news came out that she would be joining Dancing with the Stars. She has been killing it on Dancing with the Stars. Uh, I mean, it's actually been downright inspiring to watch her do what she's doing. And I know that she has a background in, 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 in dancing, but uh, she has absolutely been killing it. And I think that she is going to really, really, um, she, she is really going to see her star rise when this is all said and done. If you have not been watching the last two weeks, she has been doing great. And I'm told, it's every Monday that she competes. Last week, her her her, her partner had a uh, an injury and she had to go a short note, a very crazy thing. Anyway, uh, I'm told that tonight, uh, her, her plan is to pay homage to the great sport of mixed martial arts. That is the plan tonight. Uh, so if you are a fan of Paige Van Zandt, um, if you are a fan of Dancing with the Stars, if you are a fan of both and MMA, then watch tonight and support her. I think it's a pretty damn cool thing, and it could coincide very nicely with uh, UFC 200. You had to expect at some point that she was going to uh, link the two and and obviously, you know, get people in her world excited about her and, and voting for her. If you look at the videos, I actually went on the Dancing with the Stars 
uh, YouTube channel, her videos have like double, triple all the other videos, the ones of her dancing. So clearly the MMA fans are interested in this story. And um, yeah, I, I, I almost feel like it's not fair. She's, she's, she's an actual dancer. And she's competing with, uh, with a partner on short notice. And, they're, and they're, they're, they're in unison like that. It's great. So I'm curious. I, I don't know exactly what uh, the deal is, but uh, I am told tonight she is paying homage to the sport of MMA. So it appears as though there's going to be some kind of MMA theme, I would guess, from that. I think the show airs at uh, 8 o'clock on, uh, on ABC. I used to watch it. I watched a little bit when Chuck Liddell was on. It's fun. It kind of it kind of makes you feel like wow, Doug Flutie. Seeing Doug Flutie at his age, and I'm sure banged up and everything in that tank top. Damn, Flutie, the man, former Buffalo Bill quarterback, former uh, CFL legend, Canadian Football League legend. Seeing him dance like that is is pretty damn amazing. And of course, who can forget the great Jody Sweeten of uh, Fuller House? I have not seen the new Full House. I don't know if anyone else has seen it but she is on that show as well. Anyhow, if you want to support Paige Van Zandt, uh, I, I, I suggest watching or at least voting for her tonight. I think that would be a very cool thing, especially as she you know, has a, some sort of MMA plan going on. I'm curious to see what that is. If not, we'll probably have the videos up shortly thereafter on MMAfighting.com. 